I make the world graphical. I add value through my products. I am an animator. I am a filmmaker. I develop trends. I transform designs to reality. I create environments. I translate stories to furniture. I design experiences. I am an immersive media designer. I design mobility. This is not only a design institute. This is a design lab. Join us in our design movement. Hello and good afternoon everyone. I welcome you all to the series of webinars and workshops by MIT Institute of Design. Since last five years, as a part of Design Connect program, we are interacting with young budding designers with various seminars, webinars, and workshops where experts share their experiences with the young budding designers. So this year, uh, we have moved one step ahead by keeping these sessions more interactive and engaging the students to get hands-on experience on various topics of design. So here we are, today's Design Connect on user experience design, Ehsaas Ka Anubhav, Experience, Emotion, by Dr. Richa Mishra, HOD, User Experience Design at MIT Institute of Design, MIT ADT University, Pune. And we have with us Mr. Atul Manohar, Chief Innovation Officer, Thought Craft Design Studio. I feel really honored to welcome and introduce our speakers for today's Design Connect. Mr. Atul sir has done bachelor's in architecture from MM College of Architecture, Pune, and master's in product design from IIT Bombay. Sir is a product design and development strategist who has designed several physical and software products. He has extensive experience working in consumer and enterprise software product development. By way of industry experience, he has worked as a product designer at Colorfly Designs Mumbai, founder and director at Genesis Designs Pune, AVP at Mahindra Satyam Pune, Director of User Experience at Informatica Bangalore, Director Experience Design at Zedida Pune. He is now a Chief Innovation Officer, a founding member of the Thought Craft Innovation Studio, focuses on offering UX product design services to enterprise product companies and funded tech startups. He has incubated mentored and managed many design teams in over 29 years of his work experience. He has organized and conducted various innovative design workshops and UX trainings. He likes experimenting with innovation tools and practice design thinking in order to deliver high value to the end customers. Dr. Richa Mishra, is heading department of user experience design at MIT Institute of Design. She has completed her doctoral studies from NITIE in domain of product experience design. Her strong research approach is evident through her profile. She has many publications in international renowned journals and also has several copyrights and awards on her name. She is also in an editorial board of renowned journals. Her research interests revolve around conversational user interface, health informatics, human factors, and inclusive design. She has curated several hackathons and design awards. So now I request to Dr. Richa Mishra to take over the further proceedings of this session. Thank you. Hello everyone. 
thanks bhavika for such a elaborate introduction hi atul hello i am delighted to share a stage with you and chat with all our viewers towards on some very interesting topics in the domain of user experience design uh before we begin i would like to entail a small in incidents i belong to the janta who are lured by those big discount sale days i'm not sure about the amount of money which i save but i'm confident that the amount of money which i spent is inversely proportional to my impulsive buying behavior so once i ordered some grocery from an application on those so called big discount sale days i entered home and asked my voice assistant to let me know the status of my order the reply was i'm sorry the order got cancelled i asked the voice assistant to let me know what was the reason but the reply was not convincing uh, frustratingly i asked the voice assistant to connect me to the customer support and it was futile this time i was fuming and i moved to the application to chat with that intelligent chatbot i just had two questions in my mind first why did my order got cancelled without notifying me and second can i reorder because it was not visible there the intelligent chatbot had all the answers like refund status order status refund mode help improvement apart from what i was looking for this nerve wrecking experience is a reflection of bizarre user experience design crazework had said that the experiences which are interrupted are elaborately remembered than the ones which are uninterrupted that's why i request all my viewers to glue till the end of the session to understand how these experiences which offers which are offered by products and services are dealt for better user experience design so let's begin the session atul i welcome you once again to our virtual session and uh, let's begin by letting our viewers know what is the evolution of ux i mean highlighting the history and then talking about its present form uh sure rita thanks uh interestingly uh, the profession of design got kind of endorsed by the industry during the industrialization hey guys you you learned that term right industrialization sometime in the history i'm sure so that time industry needed a very specialized profession called uh, designer and designer used to do design for the industry later on when information technology industry kind of uh, develop it is primarily the the field of all the coders they'll build very complex programs to solve problems uh, it was like a technology guy is building a program using very complex technology and the humanness in that whole application was kind of missing the human interaction with the machine the human interaction with the computer is the way it probably all started with a couple of books uh don't make me think and stuff like that right so that's precisely where i'm sure it was like a 30 years back probably absolutely uh 30 years back these books were very popular because all the engineers built technology mm -hmm. in terms of software and the users couldn't really cognize it users couldn't really understand how to play with it how to work with it and stuff like that then slowly they started something called usability engineering okay. so long time back our field ux was called as usability engineering wherein the usability engineer will move in look at the application like the one you explained and try to figure out what is wrong with that interaction you know and that interaction is necessarily a kind of a communication between the software and a user so is there something wrong between the communication and he probably could find three four issues like hey i am not able to find a particular feature like you said where is my or why my order got cancelled how do i find that you know right. is it really even possible to find that in amazon i don't know you guys find out but all mm -hmm. these are little functions sometimes were like hidden they were not very upfront and usability engineers picked up all these things saying that hey this looks like a mistake mm -hmm. so the whole thing started as a, a fault finding exercise in the industry slowly industry said hey you are good at finding faults why didn't you design the whole workflow instead of you coming over and criticizing my things then slowly designers thought yeah i think i i'm much better than that because the designers are supposed to be trained in understanding what users want 
and how users will behave and how users will react to your software. So with that context, the designer started designing the flow before even it is coded, you know? So before the software is ready, they started designing. Well, the question will be, how did they design, you know? Right. Very simple, take a paper and a pen, straightforward, uh, draw a rectangle, this is my screen, this is what will happen and so on, you know? The first probably birth of the paper prototype as we call in our language, right? Sure. So designers started visualizing everything that happens in the software before even the coding starts. So that's the way the whole field now is very matured. Most of the IT companies, whether service companies or software companies are having their UX departments, but it all started from the usability engineering. And now that we are actually designing the whole thing even before it is coded, you know? Yeah. So that's very roughly the, the design, UX design history. Does it make sense guys? So in fact, you <clears throat> spoke the timeline in a very evident way and it's like, crystal clear, I'm sure, to our viewers. Uh, on the similar lines, I had this question, you know, I mean, it has been always noticed that these terms like HCI, human computer interaction, mm -hmm. or human centered design or UX are synonymously used. So is there any discrimination or bifurcation for these terms? That's an interesting question. Uh, technically, again, let me go back to the same history, you know, the era of all these books of don't make me think kind of books like 25, 30 years back. Uh, the, they were, uh, see, humans are like that, right? We try and find a term. So the term that time came up was primarily HMI, human and machine, machine interaction, you know? True. So the HMI started with uh, probably you know, designing the whole controls over a camera or a lathe or whatever it is. And that designing the controls is kind of translated into softwares for that matter, right? So HMI is like, I could, I would probably qualify it as a father of user experience. So it's a kind of an overarching field. It takes care of maybe machine interface. It takes care of how the knobs are turned in a lathe or a car. Whereas now that things have specialized, people have specialized a lot. Uh, the, the slowly the other, let me introduce you guys with the other term, uh, the HCI, the human machine interaction. And then we'll talk about the human computer interaction because the machine in question is a computer now or a software. So instead of getting frustrated, uh, have you guys booking, uh, booked a, a ticket on IRCTC uh, 10 years back, maybe five years back? <laughs> it was a frustrating experience. True. So that whole human computer interaction uh, kind of tries to resolve the whole communication between the software and the user. So let's move on to the next term, which is user experience. So user experience, I would say, these are kind of getting specialized for that matter. It's my view. Human machine interaction is like every machine and every human. Human computer interaction is like related to software to start with. And user experience is more of <coughs> what you see on the screen to start with. What you see on the screen, what you experience on an app or the, or the audio input or whatever it is. There are a number of ways we interact with the machine now. It's not only the mouse and the keyboard, right? I could talk to the machine, I could talk to my Siri or Google or whatever. Yeah. So looking at all these interactions, now that we are, we are actually getting a holistic experience of the whole service or a product. Uh, so yeah, there is one more term I'm, I'm introducing, right? A product and a service. A product is something I buy. For example, you guys must be knowing Microsoft uh, Word. That's a product I buy. Whereas there is a service I can buy. Any examples of service? Let me give you one. All of you guys have used uh, Google Google Drive. That's a kind of a service. I pay most of the most of you yeah. use it for free, but it's a service for which people pay over a month. So if at all a service is designed well, it communicates very well with the user. The adoption will be much higher. Right. So the beauty of the last term user experience we are into now is straight smoothening and designing the whole experience around a product or a service. That's the way I'll kind of look at these three terms. There is one more term I believe you talked about, user UI. Right. So user interface is necessarily the interface, the physical interface or the virtual interface with the machine. It refers to the, to the screen of your mobile, of your application on a desktop, or maybe there are more things now. There are some tactile things now that we are wearing those VR goggles and going in and stuff like that. So user interface is necessarily a front end of a software which communicates 
which which makes that transition you know the user and the software they communicate through the ui yes. so ui is just that thin layer whether it is an image or anything that's just a layer but user experience is kind of overarching around the whole experience of the product and service is that making sense so it's wonderful because you know this word ux and ui is used blunderly wrong at times in fact just to add to the example uh, i'm sure uh, all of us have seen the metamorphosis of page to google pay mm -hmm. so i kind of like page wonderfully because it is a simple ui very clean faster most mode of transactions when google page was converting to google pay i mean initially scanning the qr code was a pain because you have there was no option of uploading the scanner the image from the gallery mm -hmm. but look at the structured ui these days and of course i mean of course there is scope of improvement but ui and ux is much better than what was there when it was sort of evolving Absolutely. so i i Absolutely. think as you mentioned it very clearly that ux and ui ui is a subset of ux it can be complementary but of course they are not the same it has to go together absolutely so very true yeah so i'm sure um, you know there's a lot many questions which came up and viewers are very interested in asking that what are the different prospects of us ux mm -hmm. uh, frankly as a ux designer i told you about the historical state wherein there were usability engineers so usability engineers were engaged for contract you know because they, it, they didn't have a full time job and now that the ux designers are actually doing much more than just finding faults what the ux designers are doing is they are actually visualizing how that application will look like even before the coding kind of starts so the engagement of the designers is much more now uh, from the prospect perspective uh, obviously any design field is a very specialized field i'll give you a kind of parallel example in the construction industry which is the design field uh, architect right architect is the one who does a lot of design for the construction industry so similarly in the ux the ux designer plays a role of a ux architect or an architect who will who will kind of design the whole experience so effectively now let's let's really come back to the prospects uh, there are kind of two to three types of companies those will engage ux designers one i'll call it a, a consulting or a service company Uh, which will have large number of employees uh, all of you know quite a few of them maybe the big fives everybody so these will be probably having uh, a couple of hundred or maybe a thousand projects running through their company because their employee base is very very large so that is where they'll need number of ux designers to design their ux and design their ui right, right? and then effectively that whole ux will be translated into the real software Uh, by the ui developers and the back end developers and so on so one very prominent job uh, opening will be in most of these consulting or uh, service companies uh, the beauty of uh, getting a job in a in that kind of a company is a designer gets to work on multiple types of jobs uh, sometimes he'll be working on a banking application sometimes you'll be working on a aerospace application or manufacturing or technology you name it and that that's about it so that's the beauty i think of working in a service company or a, a consulting company for that matter so in in that kind of a company designers will be engaged uh, in a project for about 3 to 4 months then they'll go to some other project and so on right. that's the way things will work there is another type of company which i'll call it a for that matter dot com of a kind so it's a kind of a service uh, maybe the e-commerce websites or maybe the naukri dot com kind of services or jeevan sathi kind right. of all these services so they also need a lot of user experience to improve their experience in terms of how many people are registering there how many people are actually paying for their service and so on so bottom line of every business is making money obviously right. and designers play a very very important role in making their business grow at every level even in a service company so the second type of company i talked about was a kind of a dot com company either a is commerce company or a services company uh, something that gives service uh, the third company i'll talk about is a is a product company so product company necessarily has for example uh, a lot of products we use daily microsoft has lots of products like the office suit and stuff like that right so these products are also designed by somebody so the third type of company that will technically engage most of the designers are the ux product product designing so uh, these three are at large the three types of engagements 
but at this moment at least i could say most of the industries are super hungry for talent especially when it comes to ux industry is really really hungry they really need more and more designers because there are lots of design jobs in the industry at large did i miss any out out of these three did so, i miss any so uh, by and large you want to tell us that maybe consultancy is one line services is one line and product is a third line which Absolutely. is there Absolutely. and of course all of them are sort of competing with each other to get the best talents so has pandemic hit any of it i mean has it got any positive effect negative effect because of all of this online and remote working culture so interestingly i was talking to a a, a startup in the us they are into uh, they are into some kind of a business of video interviewing you know and he told me before the pandemic their service was actually not doing very well oh. <laughs> and the moment the pandemic started they were about to close down their business by the way it was a startup that invested a lot of money invested a lot of efforts 2 3 years and then pandemic actually gave them a boost trust me so a lot of these services were boosted by the pandemic take an example of zoom take an example of any of these tools the need of all these online tools has increased drastically most of the companies who never even dreamt of working from home or working online are going online now so the number of software development uh, projects coming up in the industry have actually probably doubled i don't know they have actually increased and effectively the number of jobs in uh, will also obviously increase so Absolutely. in my mind uh, for the it <laughs> industry uh, it has become a for the first year it was kind of bad people were waiting and watching they were not employing many more, more people but in the last year the job market has really opened trust me on that and people are hiring left and right, right. so if at all there is a effect as on now i could say uh, it probably is positive for the designers wonderful true i mean uh, that's what uh, things have changed uh, wider uh, from that because no one imagined at least in india that you will get a grocery thing in 20 minutes i mean before Seriously. that uh, ordering a food of course we could order with, with some amount of time but just getting within minutes and uh, leaving in remote parts of the city is also so easier these days in in, in fact i would like to tell our viewers that uh, the way we also design our course curriculum mm -hmm. has also got these facets mm -hmm. so we give uh, bdes in user experience and mdes in user experience wherein we have three broader pillars mm -hmm. so it's technology of okay. course design and human factors so the idea here is to help the students to sensitize with the basics of technology with a human centric approach and giving them a psyche of design psychology uh -huh. so we have like very interesting courses like user experience design methods uh -huh. so let's say wherein we ask the student to take up a domain not a brief uh -huh. learn how to identify problem from there prioritize the problem uh -huh. try to ideate conceptualize intervene modify remodify mm -hmm. and then of course you validate so in fact i ask my students at times that uh, human brains have a very limited power and they get very easily trapped by this power of habituation mm -hmm. so what happens that at times designing for things which are noticed is easier then designing for things which are not easy to notice so you know the flair of research with strong analytical techniques and usability methods is something what we try to put into our students so that they can dig a little deeper and come up with some and do some value addition to the society mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh, you know uh, i just wanted to also ask like you you very elaborately mentioned about the different prospects which are there in ux and what could be possible so can you briefly outline let's say when it comes to job role so what are the different career opportunities which is possible in ux uh, interesting uh, historically again uh, started with a user bred engineer who was like a mix of almost everything you know fault finder trying to fix it and stuff like that from that time to now the whole ux field has actually evolved a lot so there are three main sections of the skill sets within the ux the first one is obviously uh, we call him a ux designer so somebody who visualizes things somebody who designs all the workflows who make sure that what comes after that and stuff like that you know the second one is a visual designer who will take care of all the visual elements of the interaction of the interface the third one is a user researcher so the user researcher is very very important like you said uh, the technology the humans 
and the business are the three pillars of any any application for that matter right so user researcher is the one who will be kind of equipped with all the methodologies of user research who will go to the users try and understand their needs what do you, why do you need this software and stuff like that then secondly the user researcher will also do a bit of research in terms of whether something has been already designed whether it works for a user you know mm. so uh, the researchers technically call it formative and uh, summative kind of right. research so user researchers should be very good at communication should mm. be very good at seeing the problems right. the visual designer should be really really good at visual language theory of colors understanding what colors mean uh, layouting certain things appropriately and stuff like that and the interaction designer the ux designer will probably be the master of designing the interaction at large you know so apart from these three there are a couple of more interesting things coming up you know like the ux architect or the uh, ux writer hmm. so the what you see uh, like the first example you gave you know what is to be written in the in the help document right. or what is to be the copy of the ux so all of these are done by the ux writer so primarily there are three streams ux designer visual designer and the user researcher and there are a couple of emerging things coming up because this this is a emerging field right so you know the way you said about user research because in the past also we have got feedback from the company that the way user research has been taught mm -hmm. is kind of uh, helps the students to articulate well when they join an organization and come up with deliverable which are desired mm -hmm. you know what the basic funda as a discipline in our department which we believe is that it's very difficult to teach innovation it's very difficult to ask somebody who okay, can turn up creative and there is a halo running behind your head so the idea is what we can at least put an attempt to make them learn the basics and fundamentals of ux at least make them strong with the analytical techniques make them strong with the usability methods because we believe if your analysis is strong definitely it's going to take to you where somewhere a deliverable which is be beneficial for everyone so very true so very true do you also teach uh, some kind of coding to the students yeah so what happens as i said one of the pillar is technology so mm -hmm. coding is basically a part wherein we teach them basics of html css java and all of this the major idea is that we believe that the student is able to visualize and apprehend through coding mm -hmm. because when it comes to deliverable when you are ideating and when you are conceptualizing with things there is a possibility that you have to apprehend and gauge the finish of the deliverable mm -hmm. so if that mm -hmm. skills of coding is missing you will not be able to do that so the idea is that the <clears throat> curriculum is planned in such a way that even a student has no background of coding we mm -hmm. do a hand holding from there start with a very basic and take them to a different level step by step that's so so very interesting because i did my architecture like somebody introduced me and in my architectural days we actually i remember building a wall with my own hands that does not mean the architect will keep on doing that right. but you should know the basic brick and mortar absolutely so that's it's really good to include all that in the course fabulous absolutely thank you so much so um the the thing the way you pointed out the history of ux and the way it's changing so mm -hmm. actually ux is a very emerging technology wherein things are changing so evidently so is there any direction of work which you think a viewer should find out i mean the future towards ux or any line of work towards research that's a very good question <laughs> interestingly the uh, the information technology itself uh, has like 7 to 8 defined areas which are like emerging areas take an example of a blockchain Uh, artificial intelligence machine learning and so on i could everybody knows you could yeah. just google for that so the way the technology also branches in a particular way uh, say uh, for example big data big data is a kind of a niche area of an it or maybe virtual reality or augmented reality Absolutely. so all these are like different techniques have you have you heard of the Uh, the meta the metaverse that people Absolutely. are talking That's about that's the most trending topic these so days the metaverse will probably be a conglomeration of a lot of these technologies together you know right. so likewise the design field will also have have to branch a little so there'll be a ux for ar vr mm -hmm. there there is a very specific uh, set of design designers who focus their design skills on probably the big data and stuff like that so this is precisely where the the designer will have to get a little bit of a knowledge about the technology 
and then design for that. For example, I was working for a company that, that was into edge computing hmm. and edge computing was completely new for me. A designer has to jump in, understand the technology to a certain level. You don't have to be get a master of that technology. Yes. But all these emerging technologies will actually open new doors to all the designers. Okay. And if at all you want to specialize in AR, VR, or metaverse, or AI, or ML, uh, probably this is the best place because you don't really have to code, uh, learn six years of coding and go into that area. Absolutely. But you could just take a small, uh, quick course of a couple of uh, days or months, and you are kind of ready to jump in for designing for that area. You know? Absolutely. So all these emerging technologies will definitely open a lot many doors to the designers for sure. Wonderful. In fact, you know, um, I was just uh, sitting with my students and we were doing an interaction for this wonderful course called UCDR. Why mm -hmm. I say wonderful? Because it's the most difficult course for our students, where we mm -hmm. ask them to take up a topic, do the entire journey of user study, come up mm -hmm. with a deliverable, and the final deliverable is a research paper. Uh -huh. So we are working on this very interesting topic called doom scrolling. Mm -hmm. So you what know what? Called? Doom scrolling. Okay. So the point is that. Uh, <clears throat> Remember the era of newspapers? Mm -hmm. We used to read a newspaper folded up by the end of the page and we know it's finished. Mm -hmm. Remember the era when we were kids and we used to wait for one entire week to watch our favorite epi episode. <laughs> so we had stopping cues all over. These days, I'm sure the screens are miraculous. Mm -hmm. And since the screens are miraculous, there are no stopping cues for us. So we keep on scrolling things, especially with the result of mm -hmm. negativity, all around and pandemic hitting. So we had this habit of scrolling down and down, which keeps us engrossed and hooked to the screen every time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are so very interesting topics, which is also emerging as a merit and demerit of these emerging technologies, which mm -hmm. are also sort of scope of research for the future generation. That's really wonderful because uh, the, the ethics part of the designer is very, very critical for sure. Wonderful. So what we'll do, Atul, that we have these live questions coming up. Oh, we'll sure. take these questions one by one. <clears throat> mm -hmm. In fact, I'll ask all my viewers to also type in your questions and we'll pick up your questions one by one and we'll try to answer as far as time permits. So the first question which is coming up is that uh, 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 the question is about uh, how can, which is given by Rakesh, that how can one use UI UX in their field for example, web development and application development. Oh, wonderful. Uh, for developing any web site, web portal or web tool, or maybe some kind of an application, um, UX is very important. It should ideally start with, uh, I believe uh, Rakesh, <coughs> Rakesh has a development background, I assume. Yeah. Uh, so Rakesh, you and probably others who know a bit of coding and how it works in the IT industry, uh, the designers are now becoming an essential part of starting the whole project, you know. So earlier, uh, the coders used to come together, the uh, technical architects will come together and say, this is my technical architecture, I'll be using this database and stuff like that. And the whole design is done, then they'll directly start jumping. Whereas now that I'm seeing a very different change, now that people say, in, before you touch your HTML, before you touch your backend, front end designing, bring in the UX designers. They will actually do the user interviews. They'll create, they'll draw the whole interface, you know, in the in the UX prototypes and then let us start. So that is the huge difference Rakesh I have started seeing. Earlier, designers or user grid engineers came in at a much later stage. They started seeing, hey, something wrong in this, I can be fixing it. From that to now, wherein actually designers sometimes jump in first yeah. and they actually accelerate the whole thing. They create a very rough, 10 or 20 slider prototype. And based on that, the whole development team will pick up their work and stuff like that. So I believe, did I answer his question, Arshini, yeah, at yeah. least? Yes, you answered it very well. In fact, the next question, <clears throat> which has come by Anushka is that, can a person from interior design background be successful in UI UX field? That's a very good question. And uh, the question is asked to you, so it will be well <laughs> answered, I'm sure. <laughs> so interestingly, uh, I started my career as an architect. I have frankly designed a couple of buildings as well, long, long time back. Uh, and a designer is trained, uh, in my mind, architectural education of five years has, has been honed over probably 30, 40 years, and it's become very, very matured. Uh, to be very specific, the rest of the design fields are yet to mature their, uh, their even curriculum, uh, probably MIT is at, at the forefront, I'm sure. But still, uh, once you are trained as a designer, 
in interior design, what you do is if you're designing an interior of a house, you talk to one user, you talk to one family, try and understand what are the needs of them, what do they like, what color they like and stuff like that and design once, right? The only difference is shifting the gears from designing for one user to designing for a large section of users. The philosophy of design will probably be the same, but the tools, it's something you will have to learn. So similarly, if a UX designer will have to learn the interior design field, he'll have to know how plywood is cut and stuff like that. So Absolutely. similarly, you'll have to learn a little bit of different tools, but you are designer at heart, probably you could jump in. Absolutely. I mean, in the past, we have such records where we have students from interior design background and, and they have done reasonably well. Okay. I mean, last okay. year, there was a student who had an interior de design background in bachelor's and she won the best repair award with me in this course, which was, I was talking about oh, UCDR. Wow. Wow. So Anushka, please be rest assured if you are getting admitted to UX and you have this, you know, ability and aptitude to learn technology, of course, be whatever designer you are, you can easily adapt to UX. Definitely. So a very interesting question has come up from Ashika, who is wanting to know what is really the difference between product and UX UI? Can I comfortably do both being a product designer? That's a very good question. I mean, again, look at me I mean, for, all, for that matter. <laughs> yeah. uh, my second profession I picked up was product design. I have physically designed a lot of products for Videocon, white goods and stuff like that, long, long time back, of course. So product designers, can shift to UX design very, very smoothly. So, because now that earlier it was like physical products that you're designing, uh, there also you're not designing like interior designers for one person, you are designing for thousands and thousands of users, which you don't meet every time, right? So similarly, again, I'll, I'll, I'll probably answer the same thing. The technologies, the tools you use in physical product design and the software product design are different. You just need to master the other tools you already have uh, the knowledge of how to design. So for product designers, it's very, very easy to shift to UI and UX, right. for sure. In fact, to add to this Ashika, what I would like to say that, uh, you know, the courses which we have, have also got the flavor of uh, tangible product design. So, you know, there is always this confusion among people. They think that, okay, UX is just designing applications and websites. So let me give you an example wherein in the courses, we teach people to come up with ideas for smartwatch. We tell the students to come up with the idea to design a smart warehouse. Okay. So, you know, it's okay. not that we are only living in this world of application and website. So let's say if you have a background of product, of course, you are lacking, let's say, uh, with a BDIS UX designer who has this ability of coding and other things. But, you know, the curriculum is designed in such a way wherein you will be enabled to learn all these things. And definitely you can switch from product and can come to a UX field. Uh, interestingly, take an example of an EV design, huh? or maybe a power uh, power bank switch swiping station. Yeah. So they, it's, it's a kind of a mix of physical product and virtual product. Right. So that's precisely where product designers turn to UX will be much more better than somebody who doesn't know product, right? So probably there is a niche for you Absolutely. just waiting to, to emerge. Absolutely. So uh, this is another question emerging from Sejal in Amdar. She's asking what are the basic application we should be hands-on for UI UX designing like Figma? Uh, I mean, this question comes a lot of times to me. Uh, a lot of people who are uh, thinking of moving into design, they ask me this question. Uh, I'll probably rephrase that question, you know. Uh, all of you, some of you are sketching experts. Some of you know uh, probably good watercolors and stuff like that. Has anybody asked you a question? What brand of pencil do you use, you know? Wonderful. Do you use a Natraj pencil or a... Stadler pencil, probably Absolutely. Stadler pencils are better, Absolutely. but does it really matter? Right. No, so all these tools, it's something you could learn on the go. Absolutely. And these tool, tools will come and go. Figma, the one that was mentioned by uh, this person has been in style for last probably a couple of years. Before that, it was something else called Sketch and Envision. Before that, it was something else. So every two to three years, these tools will change. So most of the courses like I've seen MIT course, uh, they'll not teach you tools. Absolutely. I mean, you're not, you're not being expert in Figma. Yes. You are getting an expertise in design. Absolutely. And as a part of it, you'll learn Figma. You'll learn whatever it comes. True. So don't don't be bothered about the tools is what my yes. sincere feeling is. In fact, when I go to the class, I say that I'm not here to teach you technologies. 
five years down the line, I'll call you to my students here and you will teach technology to them because that's something which will keep on changing. Absolutely. What the intention here is, of course, while on the go, while on the run, we have some basics where you are sensitized with the technology and they adapt it also very faster. Mm -hmm. What is important is that you learn how to deal with the methods, the processes, mm -hmm. and how can you handle those projects? Because let's say, who imagined Metaverse? I mean, this so, is something really completely new. I'm sure the kids who were taught a few years back were not taught about Metaverse. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean when a new technology comes in, the ones who have done UX will not be able to do. So the fundamentals, if they're clear, I'm sure tools are, of course, a way of doing it, but they'll be able to adapt it quite faster. So very true. So very true. And I hope your course also uh, focuses likewise. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah. So uh, Mansi Saxena is asking a question when she's asking, how can a non-designer or non-engineer from a different background create a career in UX design? Very interesting. I mean, uh, I used to have larger teams of design uh, back in my different experiences. And uh, instead of ask, uh, answering your question, I'll answer it slightly differently. I used to have people who have done their civil engineering, I used to have people who have done their BCom and so on, you know, and human resources and everything. And because of their passion, because they like the design field, they moved to this and that's about it. Right. So moving to design is more of a decision that you make for yourself, whether I want to create something new or whether I want to just uh, use something somebody has already designed, you know. So if you have that passion of creating something new, uh, your training, because I was trained as, a, as an architect, then I was trained as a physical product designer and nobody taught me UX, frankly, right? But you don't really need, if you're an inborn designer and if you're probably getting maybe a master's degree from MIT, that's just good enough. You have the passion you have, now that you know the tools and techniques and methods and you could definitely be a designer, Absolutely. not an issue. So uh, in fact, you know, many a times this question comes to my uh, comes to me that uh, what are the prerequisites for a UX designer? Mm -hmm. So I basically answer this in a different way. I believe that, do you love comedians? I believe that designers are just like comedians mm -hmm. because comedians are the ones who would look at the intricacies, the minute details and crack the joke at the nick of time. So okay. designers also needs to be observant in identifying and looking at, you know, the intricacies. So once if you have that ability, of course, the methods, the processes anyways helping you up, even you have a non-design background, let's say, or you are not sensitized to design in your plus two or during schooling, but this is anyways going to help you to turn to a demanding UX designer later. Yeah, that stand-up comedian was a very nice, uh, uh, nice example. I'll just elaborate on that. So if you are able to see design problems in the world, uh, there are very few people who could find the problems, by the way. So is there a problem around? I'm sure in this room, I'll find at least 20 usability problems as such, right. let it with the door handle or let it with the knob or the shower in your bathroom and stuff like that. So are you the one who finds, who at least recognizes all these as problems? Wonderful. So if you are able to find and recognize something as a problem, which needs to be solved from the design side, I think that mentality is more needed than anything else. The rest of the tools and techniques you will learn in colleges uh, like MIT for that matter. True, true. So uh, Smruti wants to ask us that, do companies come and hire UX designers for physical products like EV? So uh, yes, Smruti, we have a very well-versed placement team and we have number of companies coming up. So uh, depending upon your skills, you can apply to those companies on the portal which we have. And there is a process of placement, which is starting from assignments and, you know, your basic uh, criteria, what they have, and then interview round. So if you clear all of this, depending on your skills, you can pick up your best option, which is suitable for you. Okay, so uh, this is a question from Anjali Mishra. She wants to ask us that if you could give three suggestions to your younger self, who was about to begin a career in UX designer, from product designer or even architectural background, what it will be? Uh, I'll definitely start with uh, trying to see the problems, you know? So if at all you are getting stuck at, the, at probably completing your order in the e-commerce platform or booking a railway ticket in the, in the IRCTC, the iconic uh, uh, site and stuff like that, 
uh, i think that is the way if, if you have that in your mind you know try and see the problems is the first thing right secondly try and be a little creative uh, there are two ways uh, knowledge is uh, kind of shared right uh, typically in our educational system i have seen a lot of subjects for <laughs> for logical thinking uh, let it be <laughs> physics or science or mathematics uh, most of the curriculums are designed in such a way that there is a problem and here is a structured way of going for the solution and in most of the scenarios solution is one right. or at the most two whereas there is another part which is called as lateral thinking so if you think you think from the right side of your brain if you think that there is this lateral nature of thinking is something i do so if at all i i give you an object like this one for that matter you know so i'll ask you a question come on guys so i have an object in my hand you know i picked it up from there right so try and find five different uses for this object for that matter True. try and find whether i can convert this into a weapon like that vinja thing or whatever so if you are able to find 10 different uses or modifications of this then you are a lateral thinker Absolutely. i think the second quality for uh, for becoming a ux designer is being able to see world in different manners you know so first one is trying to see problems second one is trying to be creative trying to be uh, probably see much more than more solutions than one and third one is adopting and learning so adopting and learning to all the technologies those are thrown to you you know you don't have to be deep expert in ai okay. but you just you need to know what ai can deliver and that's good enough i believe these three qualities am i missing something rucha i'm sure right. there is something more so no what i would like to say the way you said i would just like to make a little crisp of it so a person need to be observant the way you said that so, whatever yeah. you are looking around you are able to analyze that you are able to see that Mm -hmm. persistence because the way you articulated user research i mean that's a part where you need to see understand articulate come up with something which is making sense and of course one needs to have that logical rational of identifying what mm -hmm. is what mm -hmm. you know many a times like the way you said we ask students about these questions when they come up for this interview that uh, can you think about something innovative in this or let's say can mm -hmm. you give a give a smart glass for us mm -hmm. so the the answer which is expected is that they come up with something which does not exist so of course cooking an answer in that short time is a difficult thing but if the student is a little smarter enough to analyze in a different way of course these are some of the things by which you know somebody can turn into a really reasonably good ux designer absolutely yeah. this looks like a smart glass it kind of told me to use one <laughs> yeah true <laughs> yeah yes. we could go ahead with the next one so um, the next question is from uh, sanjana what is the scope of growth from a ux designer that's like again a uh, very good question uh, in the industry <laughs> in the industry uh, a designer would probably join the design team uh, i'll i'll not talk about the designations in the industry right. it doesn't really matter right so uh, typically designers enter as an individual contributor you know they'll they'll be either of these three streams of interaction designer user research or visual designer Uh, in some cases if you are working for a startup all these three in one because they can't afford to have three people right, right. so you will be entering uh, if you are working with a startup you will be entering as a sole and the only designer in that company which is fine like an ind independent uh, designer uh, typically i'll compare this field with technical architecture you know so technical architects are also very very strong they keep on contributing as an individual contributor till they retire and there is lots of growth in their field as well you need not get different i mean for the for the sake of uh, uh, the maturity of the whole uh, field the uh, industries will give you different titles they'll make you vp and stuff like that right. but there could be individual contributors who remain to be individual contributors throughout the life still there is tremendous growth in their earnings in their experience in their type of work right, right. the other other route is a de individual designer instead of just contributing alone can start mentoring other designers and become a manager <laughs> and the third field is probably you specialize you enter as a individual designer and then you slowly specialize as a user researcher or a visual designer or an interaction designer that's another way to grow the third way to grow is uh, a very very interesting um, designation that is coming up in most of the product companies they call it ux architect 
So he's the one, he'll be probably taking UX decisions for not just one product, for all the products of that company. Imagine something like uh, Microsoft, everybody knows Microsoft, right? They have uh, tons of products. They have a lot of products for consumers as well as industry. And the UX architects will technically be designing patterns and how things work at a much larger level for the whole group of products. So these are the different ways you could grow. Now, let me look at back, look back to the designations that people have, you know, uh, the, the, there is something like senior lead principal, uh, or maybe an architect, uh, or maybe a manager. Uh, in last five to six years, maybe a little more, seven, eight years, I have started seeing in very large IT companies, there are designations like a VP of UX design. Mm -hmm. That's relatively a new phenomenon. Uh, last seven to 10 years at the most. True. Now that we have gone to the next level, there is something called chief design officer. Mm. Very, very few, very large True. companies have a chief design, design officer. officer. True. So there is tremendous growth possibility from an individual contributor perspective right. or as a manager. Uh, does that kind of answer your question? So, in fact, you elaborately <laughs> answered this question. I'll just give a small different angle or just an example which happened here. So. Uh, growth also means the kind you said with designation and of course with every designation there's a new learning because a new role needs that kind of decision making. Now I don't know if the answer for the growth also is in terms of finances. Of course yes when the students so our highest package goes around some 20 to 27 lakhs here mm -hmm. and the student goes from 27 to 40 lakhs in almost two to three years time. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what is the meaning of growth to you. So these are all the horizons, which is exactly. all possible. I believe that it's up to you how you are taking. We are here to facilitate and sensitize you the fundamentals, mm -hmm. depending upon your skill, your abilities that can be taken forward. So we have this question from Amina <clears throat> Pandey, who asks us that where do India stand in UX UI in the world? especially in the context of competition with US and Europe in the form of education, jobs, and pay? Wonderful question, uh, by the way. Uh, again, uh, let me go back to my own history. You know, When I graduated from IIT as a product designer, most of my contemporary students, uh, if somebody got a job in the US, that time they probably needed to do another another master's degree there, and then they qualify to be a good designer there and stuff like that. But from there to now, things have drastically changed. Now that name a company, uh, name an IT company, uh, name an automobile company, and I'll be able to point out a couple of Indian designers at a very, very high level. Detroit is full of a lot of Indian automobile designers. Uh, the Bay Area is full of a lot of uh, VPs of UX design who are Indian origin you know right. so that whole barrier of you are in india and you are designing for the world has actually gone 10 years back it is history yeah. so now that as you know most of the it companies are actually hiring at the highest level most of the indian talent right similarly in the design field as well the topmost positions have been started filling in by the indians so there is nothing not right. nobody will stop you we okay. actually, at our age, we had that barrier, right. uh, not anymore. For this generation, actually, they'll jump into something wherein they'll say, oh, you're a designer from Indian uh, design school. Wow, please come. Yeah. I mean, that's the huge difference I have seen in the last few years. Absolutely. I mean, the entire MNC culture, wherein all these big companies come here and they pick up the undergrads and the masters and they take in. So I don't think that barrier is any way still a barrier now. Absolutely not there. Yeah. So uh, Ananya is asking a question to us. He wants to know what are the job opportunities in UI UX apart from IT? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, frankly, uh, I'll ask you another question. <laughs> Tell me one industry which doesn't have IT. <laughs> so very few, right? Very, very few. So a lot of automobile companies have now it's not really a technically an IT company, but a lot of IT companies, uh, a lot of automobile companies are engaging UX designers to design their HMI, to design their entertainment systems, to design their backend systems, which are catering to all the employees and stuff like that. Okay. So uh, it's not only the UX design, it's not only the IT companies that will engage the UX designers. Interestingly, uh, a lot of uh, two of my friends are VP of user experience in one of the largest banks of America. Oh, Is that a good example? So it's not an IT company, right. but a bank 
has so such a vast portfolio of the IT for their own consumption, they engage somebody at the VP level in their payroll. That kind of answers your question, I trust. Yeah, true. So uh, Shelly Khare is asking a question. Uh, sir, what is the interaction design and how is it related to UX design? I think this was already answered, but if you can give small example to sort uh, of- See, these uh, first. five years from now, the UX design field may even be termed as something else. Trust me, I mean, you could write yeah. it down somewhere right. because things change. Uh, the interaction design was an intermediate stage, intermediate uh, kind of terminology we found because uh, the, the te technical usability engineering guys did the UI design as such. Mm -hmm. Then it was not just the UI design, right? It's not only what you see on the screen, it is the interaction within that screen. Right. So that's why the designers started calling them, no, we are not UI designers, we are interaction designers. We'll right. start seeing much more than what is there on the screen. Right. And UX design is kind of slightly wider than that. I mean, True. anyway, all these are terms, they right. keep on changing, Absolutely. but uh, uh, that's how it works. Yes. And five years from now, there'll be probably uh, Metaverse UX or AI UX Absolutely. or Big Data UX and stuff like that. Right. True. So in fact, you know, in the curriculum, which we are modifying, we're also trying to put up some electives for the students mm -hmm. to help them to sensitize all these emerging things which is coming up. Oh, wonderful, already. Yeah. Yes. That's great. So MIT looks like is uh, on the forefront of modify. How often do you modify your uh, syllabus? By yeah, so wonderful question. Mm -hmm. What we do that we have this BOS members wherein we get our entire curriculum approved by them mm -hmm. on a very periodic basis of one year. We also take up a step wherein we take call people from industries like you and mm -hmm. we take their inputs. We also have some alums in our BOS because they have seen both the side of the story. Mm -hmm. So they are the ones who let us also understand, okay, no, this is something which should be added or this is what I'm very strong with. Mm -hmm. So we keep sort of updating our entire curriculum very periodically. Which I mean, on a very frequent needed. periods rather. No, which is absolutely needed. Absolutely right. needed because the whole technology ethos is changing so fast absolutely. that the syllabus should change. And that's yeah. a pleasant surprise. Right. I haven't Thank seen you. an industry I mean, uh, institute changing so fast. Thank you so much. So I think the, the last question we'll take up because we have a signal to wrap up now from Neeraj Hari. How important is a pencil scribble for you to generate idea, even if there are easy alternatives available digital era in field of UX design? Another uh, very good question, frankly. Yeah. Um, I sincerely feel the connect of a human being with the pencil, with the paper, is much better. It comes so fluently. See, using a pencil, drawing something on the paper doesn't need any other training of a tool, you know, sure. apart from sharpening your pencil or not even with the clutch pencils. So that connect of what is there in my mind, bringing that onto the paper happens much faster in my mind, of course, with the pencil and a paper. The moment you jump onto the tools, for example, if you are a product designer, somebody was, and if you directly jump onto the 3D Studio Max or whatever tools you use, uh, you'll start thinking from the tools perspective. And in my mind, that is wrong. You should ideally start with putting everything in your mind onto the paper because that connect is the fastest and the easiest. And once you crystallize that idea on a paper, then slowly think of the tool. Otherwise, a lot of tools will kind of limit your creativity right. because then you are thinking from the perspective of how to make that using this tool rather than what I want. What to is do. coming to mind? The flow is getting hindered in that way. For sure, for yeah. sure. Any other thoughts? Does that no, make I sense? Mean that, that's what we also ask our students at times to just, you know, put up your ideas somewhere in the paper and then maybe mm -hmm. you can put it up later on. So let's say we, we teach these uh, <coughs> models of contextual inquiry, mm -hmm. but I ask them that please draw it somewhere and show it to me. So of course the submission may be digitalization, which is later, but when you are going for, let's say a user research, and when you are observing your users, you will not sit up on a digital platform to put up your ideas, right? Mm -hmm. The ideas which are coming up immediately or the observation which is happening around will definitely the fastest most is scribbling on the paper. So that's what we also suggest. Uh, there is one more quick uh, uh, skill, which is very important. I believe the student should also know. Storytelling is one very, very important tool for the designers. Thanks for reminding this. Yeah. Even in the industry, right. we have, uh, I mean, I, I have worked with a product manager who is having like a 27 years of experience in product management. And whenever I used to talk to him, he used to like uh, sit with a coffee with me in a relaxed sofa and say, 
now i know this person will do this this person will ask him and it's it's a story he is evolving in himself you know okay. so that storytelling if at all you are good at story writing or narrating a whole story that's it's as good as a sketch True. trust me True. so that story will probably tell a little more than the sketch right Wonderful. so storytelling and sketching are are very very important for sure yeah so thanks a lot atul i mean thanks a lot for coming sparing time uh, giving such an enriching session to our viewers i'm sure they had got brief idea about what is ux and what we do uh, i would also like to thank to all our viewers for gluing with us till the end of the session you can uh, of course uh, mail us if any question or queries are there thank you thanks a lot over to bhavika i would like to thank dr richa and mr atul sir for the most interesting and inspiring session thank you to all the participants for joining us today thank you to all the coordinators and the technical team yes uh, to know more about mit institute of design kindly visit our website and for any queries kindly connect to the admission team lastly i request my technical team to please play the av of mit institute of design thank you all I make the world graphical. I add value through my products. I am an animator. I am a filmmaker. I develop trends. I transform designs to reality. I create environments. I translate stories to furniture. I design experiences. I'm an immersive media designer. I design mobility. This is not only a design institute. This is a design lab.